The name of the controversial Portuguese novelist José Saramago may not be widely known, but in less than a quarter of a century, he has gained a reputation as one of the world's most important living writers. If we ask in Britain to say the name of a Portuguese writer, it's Saramago for sure. In my opinion, Saramago is one of the greatest novelists in the world nowadays. In recognition of his achievement, Saramago was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1998. Saramago's writing career has been highly unorthodox. He didn't start writing novels until his mid-50s, because until then, he claimed, he had nothing worth telling. The withdrawal by the Portuguese government of his controversial book, The Gospel According to Jesus Christ, from an important literary prize, led to self-exile on the Spanish island of Lanzarote. And his Nobel Prize was condemned by the Vatican for being awarded to an inveterate communist. Now, with the publication of The Cave, his first novel since winning the Nobel Prize, José Saramago has agreed to grant a rare interview. This is Lanzarote Airport, gateway to one of the world's most popular holiday hotspots. But I haven't come to join the crowds of reveling tourists. This is an extraordinarily weird place. I'm left behind the ribbon of tourist development on the coast and already I'm in the middle of nowhere. And the whole process has only taken about three minutes. Lanzarote, of course, is volcanic and it's very arid and dusty. One wonders what would bring a writer to live here. I know that Saramago, of course, had some trouble with the church and the Portuguese government. So it may be that coming to a place like this where he can exile himself stubbornly on a rock, and that would make it a pretty ideal place to come to. Hola, Mr. Saramago. Saramago started his working life as a mechanic, then trained himself as a draftsman, journalist, and translator. He was in his mid-fifties by the time he became a serious novelist. Saramago's first novels tended to be concerned with Portugal, with its history and identity. But since moving to Lanzarote in 1993, his writing has evolved into more universal directions. The focus of his most recent novel is the discovery of Plato's cave beneath a 21st century shopping centre. The cave is the last part in a loose trilogy that includes blindness, a shocking examination of what happens when an entire city goes blind, and all the names, a disturbing and tender epic in which a clerk in a registry office becomes obsessed with finding a woman whose index card he picks up by mistake. Todos os meus romances partem de algo impossível. É impossível que toda a gente segue ao mesmo tempo. É impossível, há uma leve maneira também, o que acontece em todos os nomes. É impossível que a caverna do Platão esteja debaixo de um centro comercial. E, portanto, se não há impossíveis, eu não escrevo romances. <laughs> what if Jesus, son of Mary, had written his own account of the New Testament story? This is the impossible premise that the Gospel according to Jesus Christ is based on. And it gave Saramago a particular opportunity to speak with his uniquely humane vitality. Wide awake, Mary lay on her back, listening and staring into space as if waiting. Joseph furtively approached and slowly drew back the sheet. Meanwhile, Mary had opened her legs, or they had opened by themselves as she dreamed, and remained open, 
perhaps because of this sudden lassitude or the mere premonition of a married woman who knows her duty. God, who is omnipresent, was there, but pure spirit that he is was unable to see how Joseph's skin came into contact with that of Mary, how his flesh penetrated hers, as had been ordained, and perhaps he was not even there when the holy seed of Joseph spilled into the precious womb of Mary, both sacrosanct, being the fount and chalice of life. For in truth, there are things God himself does not understand, even though he created them. Out in the yard, God could neither hear the anguished gasp which escaped Joseph's lips as he experienced an orgasm, nor the gentle moan Mary was unable to repress. Joseph stood in the middle of the room, raised his hands, and looking up at the ceiling, gave the most dire thanksgiving of all which is reserved for men. I thank you, almighty God, king of the universe, for not having made me a woman. Since the 1970s, when he fought for the end of the Salazar regime in Portugal, Saramago has been a rebellious figure, but his readiness to be outspoken, both as novelist and commentator, seems not to stem from a desire to draw attention to himself, but from an ingrained sense of justice and morality. His long allegiance to communism informs much of what he does and writes about, though he regards it as part of his genetic, not literary, makeup. Num tempo como este, em que tudo aconteceu, o de Berlim, Stalin, o Gulag, tudo, tudo, tudo isso, como é que você consegue ser, continuar a ser comunista? Porque a verdade é que, é que eu continuo a ser comunista. Uma espécie de mecanismo hormonal que faz com que a pessoa seja, em certos aspectos, aquilo que é. Então digamos que eu transporto dentro de mim uma hormona que faz com que eu não tenha outro remédio, não tenha outra solução, se não ser comunista. It would be easy to fall into cliché and attribute Saramago's sense of rebellion and resistance to his peasant origins. His roots are in Azinaga, a small farming community 100 kilometers north of Lisbon. Although his family moved to the capital when he was a few years old, the young José stayed with his grandparents during school holidays and received an education in the differences between city and countryside. Mas a casa dos avós eram muito pobres, era telha, só coberta com um telha. A casa praticamente era terra, não havia casa de banho. Era assim a que era. O povo em si, sobretudo no inverno, ou nos verões escaldantes, passava fome. E o Saramago, não estando aqui, mas vindo cá, apercebia-se disso. E talvez por isso, ele é, é a pessoa que é hoje. Eu creio que seria outro se eu tivesse nascido numa grande cidade e tivesse crescido uh, num meio, num meio, digamos, urbano, desenvolvido. As pessoas que eu conheci então, Conheciam todas as palavras de que necessitavam. E isso é que é, isso é que é extremamente curioso. Mas não conheciam mais. E viviam provavelmente com um número muito limitado de, de palavras. Três ou quatro centenas de palavras. Conheciam os nomes do, dos seus instrumentos de trabalho. Conheciam os nomes das árvores. Conheciam os nomes dos animais, dos pássaros. Isso sim. Isso, essa era a vida deles. Então, isso, eu, quando eu escrevo hoje, bem me desse tempo, palavras que, que não têm uso hoje, procuro que elas tenham uma utilidade nova. Even today, Saramago's novels are nourished by his pleasure in the language and stories of his grandfather and the people of the countryside. As a boy, Saramago was frightened of this place because of a story about a huge wooden beam that would appear at night, blocking the road in front of the local chapel. Later in life, Saramago would set the entire Catholic Church against him forever. <laughs> 